Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting four different night skies for you here. Um, I've got the paper taped to my board but I've divided it into four so I can do four small painting demonstrations and the first one on the left I've put a piece of masking tape across the horizon too. I'm using Saunders Waterford cold pressed 140 pound 300 gram weight paper. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape and is at an angle of about 45 degrees so the paint will flow. I'm going to be using a limited palette again today like I usually do. Um, today it's going to be indigo, sepia, um, Payne's grey and Prussian blue. So top left has a piece of masking tape a third of the way up to create a horizon line. Um, top right you can see that I've just drawn in simple tree shapes and painted them over with masking fluid that will keep those tree trunks pale when I paint over them. And bottom left I've scribbled in a rough tree shape that will get covered by the wash but it gives you an idea of what's going there. So I'm starting off with a mixture of indigo and Payne's grey and a little bit of Prussian blue. It's quite watery and I'm using my three quarter inch flat brush and just painting a flat wash across the page, wet paint onto the dry paper using horizontal brush strokes. And you can see that I'm keeping it nice and smooth. And as the paint softens and diffuses, then um, I should be able to keep quite a nice plain flat wash. I'm putting a bit more strength of colour across the top, working quite quickly to keep the paint flowing uh, before anything starts to dry. Then as soon as my sky looks um, nicely even like this, I'm going to take a, a penny, any small coin, wrap it in a piece of tissue or paper towel, um, carefully making sure that the edges are fairly smooth and I'm going to gently drop it and sort of touch it carefully um, into the paint about a third in from the right for a nice compositional element and this is going to create a nice easy moon so I press it into the wet paint then carefully lift it off and you can see that I've lifted the paint out in that sort of lovely moon shape and I'm very pleased with that. So on to the next. So I've added into my mixture my sepia so that you can see that that dark mixture is, is quite brown and much warmer tones now. And I'm scrubbing the paint across the page and you can see where the masking fluid trees are. And I'm leaving little white gaps for light between the, the sort of scrubbed marks that I'm creating with this small Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush. Now I've added a lot more indigo to the mixture and you can see this sort of blackish blue that's coming across and tube consistency sepia again um, and this should diffuse into the paint that's already on the paper there and give me some nice shadows beneath the trees with that lighter um, cloudy sort of sky, night sky that you can see beyond them. Um, as the paint runs down the page because the board's at 45 degrees it tends to pull up a bit on any sort of joints where the masking fluid is so using a tissue just carefully lifting out that any excess from that. Now I'm afraid the third one um, I forgot to switch the camera on but it's quite simple I mixed up a really dark mixture of all my colours mixed together and just spread them across the page like this you can see how dark and rich the paint is and again I'm using the tissue um, wrapped around the coin pressed into the wet paint to lift out a moon shape. And now I'm laying my board flat and going to let everything dry in these first three. But first of all, I'm going to sprinkle some ordinary table salt across the foreground of this bottom left, very dark painting. What that should do is push away some of the paint, the salt sort of repels it and creates these little blooms and which can look like little flowers or bits of undergrowth, leaves, foliage, all that sort of thing. So hopefully we'll get some nice effects from that. And now onto the final sky, night sky. 
and for this one I'm going to use the Harky brush and mostly Prussian blue and sepia to start with and I'm going to use it quite rich and quite thick um, and I'm starting off with the Prussian blue maybe a little bit of indigo got caught in there as well running it across the page allowing some to turn into dry brush so I get that lovely sparkle effect now I'll go over that with really rich paint I've added some um, of the sepia to the brush and without washing it really rich really thick and you can see that I'm introducing that across the bottom of the page and I'm going to pull that up across the painting and bring it up over some of the dry brush so that I can hopefully create some sort of layered um, night shadowy clouds across the sky but leaving some of the light um, from the dry brush sparkling through um, that sort of abstract cloud effects that I'm trying to create. So this is the real experiment of the four. So just going to really, just putting the paint on and seeing what happens. And it's actually beginning to look like a sort of landmass. The light is almost like a, the light on the horizon. So I'm going to flick some water from the water jar into the lower area um, just to add a bit of diffusion, a bit of difference. And again, another experiment and then see what happens. And just before I leave things to dry, I'll peel off that horizon line masking tape um, and just then leave everything to dry and then come back and finish the paintings. So I hope you think this is approachable. I think it is, especially for beginners. Um, this can be a nice exercise of trying some different scenes really quickly and experimenting and finding out quite a lot about different watercolour techniques, especially wet in wet. Now the painting's dry, I'm using a flat brush and some masking fluid. I dipped the flat brush into some soap first that protects the bristles so that the masking fluid doesn't ruin the brush. Using the flat brush, I'm running some light lines um, using the tips of the flat brush beneath the moon, starting off small, small at the horizon and getting wider as I approach the bottom of the painting. Um, and I'm going to preserve the white there of the paper uh, with the masking fluid, hopefully to give me a moon path on the water. Now, just before I remove the masking fluid on this one, I'm just going to wipe the latex areas of the trees with tissue in case there's any damp paint still left on the shiny surface. And then when I'm sure it's all dry, I'll use my finger or you can use an eraser to rub away all the masking fluid to reveal the unpainted paper trees. And then once it's all removed, um, just brush off any rubble with a dry brush and I'll brush off any salt remains from the uh, bottom um, left one. Um, and you can see the salt has given me some lovely effects. I'm really, really pleased with how these are looking so far. So moving up to the top right, I'm going to use my small calligraphy brush and you can use any fine brush with a point, a detail brush, um, maybe a rigger, a round brush with a good point. And all I'm doing is running clean water down carefully through the unpainted paper for my trees, making sure I restrict where the water goes so that I'm creating a wet environment to then drop the paint in and the paint will only run where it's wet the rest of the page is dry so I can dot in uh, various mixes of my colors my limited palette so blue um, Prussian blue and indigo Payne's grey and sepia and just dot that in leaving some nice light areas so that I give the impression of bark on the trees maybe sort of some silver birches something like that and the reason why I wet the paper first is firstly as I said it means it's easier to just drop paint into the wet areas um, but it also softly diffuses um, what, you know, one colour into another. Uh, if you get it too dark, you can use a tissue and just dab a little bit of paint out of it. But you can get these lovely soft effects. 
Um, you can, of course, just not do this and just paint your bark patterns in if you prefer onto the dry page but I like the softness that this effect gives it keeps it much lighter than the background too so they still stand out you can see there that I'm using the tissue just to dab out a little bit of paint where it's getting a bit too dark and I'll work across the page and you can see that all the trees have been done um, so I should just leave them all to dry and then come back and work on them a bit a bit more later on Next to paint the sea, um, so using my small Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush and um, indigo and Prussian blue, fairly rich mixture, quite dry. I'm pulling it carefully across the page and you can see I'm going over the masking fluid for my moon path, but I'm also leaving a lot of dry brush hit and miss sparkle on the surface of the water as well. So I'm getting sparkle on the water uh, and also hopefully that moon path will be really clear below the moon when the paint dries. Now onto this bottom painting and I'm using my calligraphy brush. Again, you can use any brush with a good point and I'm dipping it into the darkest, richest mixture that I can make with my colours, which is Payne's Grey uh, with a bit of indigo and a bit of the brown. I'm going to paint in a few trees on the left with their branches leaning across the right and hopefully end up with a few branches and fine twigs um, across the shape of the moon. Pulling it over the area that was where all that lovely texture and foliage has been created by the salt effects. And hopefully I'll end up with a really effective small painting um, with the tree branches going across the light of the full moon. You can work freehand like me because um, the original painting uh, drawing of the trees doesn't show through this heavy wash or you can get a pencil and carefully put in a guide for yourself to follow with the paint of the trees and where you want the branches. This is often a much easier thing to do for beginners. So do please feel free to do that for your own paintings. And as you paint in the branches, don't forget to take the pressure off the brush as you get towards the finer end of the branches. That way they will become narrower if you use less pressure. So when that's all done, we can move across and continue with this top painting. Um, all the bark um, soft diffusions are dry. So I'm again carrying on with my, the fine point of my calligraphy brush and I'm putting a dark shadow um, just across like an outline on the trees on the left side of all of them, just to give them a bit more definition and a bit more shape just imagining that the light is coming from the right. So the tree will be lighter on the right side and darker on the left. And now with a clean finger, rubbing away that masking fluid moon path. And you can see that that looks pretty good, but it is very harsh. So I just need to blend it in a bit more um, and get the sea looking a bit more, a bit flatter and bring some darks in between and soften the edges where the masking fluid has left quite a harsh mark. For this, I'm using my dark sort of indigo Payne's gray mix and my three quarter inch flat brush and horizontal side to side movements, just using the tips of the brush. And you can see that I'm pulling the brush through the larger white areas to create sort of more of a dark shadowed ripple effect and pulling those marks across the rest of the sea as well to integrate and harmonise the look of the whole of the water and to accentuate um, the moon path so that the rest of the glow on the water uh, sort of is in harmony with that. Just a few finishing touches now. I'm going to put a few branches with the dark mixture um, over across the top of the painting. All of these paintings are fairly sort of stylized, abstract and experimental um, and lots of fun to do. And you can learn so much from uh, playing around with different sort of variations on a theme like this. So the theme here, of course, is the night sky. So I'm going to carefully remove my masking tape 
firstly remove it from where I divided my four paintings and hopefully we should end up with some nice little studies which you could frame or you could turn into greetings cards quite easily. So let's have a look at each one a little bit more closely. This simple one with a very simple washed in sky and accentuating the light of the moon, the light of the moon path and the sparkle on the water. Now here, I like how we see the night sky uh, sort of through the branches of the trees with that really nice suggested foreground and the dark tree against the moon works really well here. The salt effects as well are wonderful. They give us that sort of abstract foliage. It looks like the foliage is just being caught by the light of the full moon. And last but not least, this one that I didn't do anything else to because I liked it the way it was, and the way the, the water droplets that I flicked onto the wet paint has created this very abstract foreground now makes me see a horizon line about a third of the way up and huge clouds obscuring the last bit of light in the sky. So I didn't need to do anything more to that. So I hope that was helpful and I hope that you'll have a go at something like this. It can be lots of fun to explore variations on a theme and you can learn so much by just experimenting with different kinds of watercolour techniques in this sort of way. And of course, it can be a great way to save money because we're getting four little paintings out of one piece of watercolour paper. So I hope that was helpful. Um, please leave us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you click on the bell icon, then you'll be notified every time I post a new video. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon. And happy painting. Bye.